and today is the 49th annual Mayor's Christmas Parade. I guess just the, the sound. I started playing drums when I was two years old. It was one of my favorite things to do as a drummer, just learning different chops. He's phenomenal. When you see him, you'll understand exactly what I mean. Yeah, it sounds great. I lost my vision when I was six years old to cancer. I had bilateral retinoblastoma. When I first lost my vision, I was still trying to see <laughs> if that makes sense. I don't know too many people that can play that are sighted that can play the drum the way he plays it. This is Santa Claus. As me being blind, I was just like, I have to work twice as hard as everyone else to find a different way of doing it. I view it as a, a opportunity. There's always a, a opportunity to prove yourself. His work ethic with the drums are, are, he wants to do it. He does not want to not do it. They were just waking up every day, being depressed. Oh, I can't do it. I never could do it. After I told myself I can't, I was like, I'm going to make my list of I can longer than my list of I can't. Every challenge that I had, I just faced it head on. I feel as though a lot of disabled people have secret talents that no one ever really, you know, sits down to try to notice. We just want to be treated just like everyone else. That's all I really can ask for all the disabled people. Just give us a chance to try. At Denzel's Shark Bar and Grill. So you're getting layers of flavor. Shrimp and grits are on the stove. But for owner Denzel Richard. So a lot of my technique is French. Business is on his mind. I'm going to pay my bills now. Richards and his wife moved here three years ago and purchased the Fells Point building that once housed Jimmy's restaurant. Two years ago, Chef Denzel began serving his own style of American and Caribbean cuisine. The reception we have gotten from the general public has been astronomical. But it didn't take long before business began to stumble. <laughs> The frequent fights that erupted in the heart of Fells Point often led to an army of officers saturating the area, and roads leading into the community were being shut down. Any artery pouring into this area is completely blocked off. So how are you going to do the business if the streets are blocked off and people cannot come into the area? And still, even though there's so much police presence, there's still um, crime, there's still shootings and whatever. The impact is taking a heavy toll. Our business dropped tremendously. The war on crime as many business owners here drowning in debt. Some have given up, others are still fighting. Richards has called on City Hall for help, but his calls have gone unanswered. But when you try to apply for it, it's just one hurdle over another hurdle, and you don't get frustrated and you just give up. Do they care? I don't know. For the fire department, this is for um, the liquor board. For now, his struggle to pay his bills is on, but the dream of restaurant success is in jeopardy. We don't have the resources to stay alive. We don't think we're going to stay alive for like another two years. Hey, hey, ho, ho. As tensions rage over the Israeli Palestinian conflict, anti Semites go home! Go home. Baltimore's Green Spring Avenue tonight became a battlefield. Beep, beep, On one side, protest groups gathered to condemn the treatment of Palestinians. Beep, On the other side, counter protesters ran to the defense of Israel. But they support the wholesale massacre and rape of citizens of Israel. Bring them home! Home. The highly charged and fiercely defended protest took place right outside a synagogue where an Israeli real estate firm was slated to host a seminar encouraging buyers to purchase homes in Israel. But their tactics, protesters say, are discriminatory. The goal of these events is to discriminate against Arabs and Muslims and to sell land in Jerusalem exclusively to Jews. This is just a, a facade and a front. Uh, for them to bring this anti-Semitic rhetoric and behavior uh, to, a, to a synagogue, and that's, that's completely unacceptable. These synagogues are selling stolen land. As far as I'm concerned, as a Jew, I have a responsibility to speak out when a synagogue is acting in an ungodly and unholy way. At times, the protests brought traffic to a halt. And as adults turned up the volume, many children were left to watch and worry.
But when you have Jews who don't understand their own Jewish identity and are going against Israel, it's, it's just very tragic to me. It was a killer workout. It's a dance party on a bike for sure. Go through a whole class of hills, sprints, jumps, climbs, crunches, full body workout. So we're having everybody come in, ride. Um, they bought a bike and all the proceeds are going back to Hands on Hit. And we raised $650 for Healthy Harbor Initiative, which helps clean all of the trash out of our water. It's really cool that you get to do something great for yourself and then get to do something great for the community. Let's go pick up some trash. What Hands on Hit is, is we are a cleanup organization. We do a 30 minute workout, an hour long cleanup, followed by happy hour at a local establishment. It's so easy for the trash in a city to pile up and it sometimes just gets to a point where it's the number one littered item in the world. We need communities and organizations like Hands on Hit to do what the common person isn't doing. And when you see a piece of trash, just pick it up. I love that it's in Baltimore, our home city. This should be something that every city is trying to do. Some of the weirdest things that we found today pair of shoes, some platform heels, a bunch of items like an umbrella. We could not do what we do without the community. 25.22. 128. Yes. So that's been 8,000 pounds since last April. It's just a number that represents the journey that we've been on through this event. If you are somebody that wants to make an impact on your city, this is the community for you. Hands on hit is where you need to be and it's a really great group of people. It's very painful. It really is, it's just painful. Robin and Helena Foster holding on to the happy images. There she is in brownie, look at that. Let's see. Of their daughter, Brittany. Yeah, I've got tons of pictures. Isn't that beautiful of her? Because the last images they have is her casket being lowered into the ground. That's my baby. Yeah. I was, it was an honor to be her father. Mm -hmm. And it, and, and it shouldn't have been cut short like it was. Brittany and her friend Julian Rosalie were killed in July of 2019 after being robbed in Baltimore City. Why? Why did he have to do it? They had her pocketbook. According to charging documents, the two suspects can be seen in this alley captured on this camera. A few minutes later, you can see the suspects following the victims on this camera. And that same camera captured the two victims being shot execution style right here. The shooter at the time, then 17 year old Charles Anderson, charged as an adult. Little oh, sweet thing. Then he walked over to my daughter, who was on her knees crying, and executed her, putting bullets in her head. And then he just That's went. what happened. But that wasn't Anderson's first violent crime. When he was 17 years old, he committed a crime when he was 16, but then he was arrested for armed robbery, assault, gun charges when he was 17. And then a couple days later, the judge, uh, it was Bloom Judge Quist. Bloomquist, let him out on a $100,000 unsecure bond without any conditions because six months later he robbed and murdered my daughter at Anderson's sentencing this past Friday his attorney claimed that at the time of the murder his client didn't know what he was doing because of his age Rob when you heard what the attorney said tell me how that made you feel I couldn't believe what I was hearing because I was wondering what was going to be their defense and all it was is talking points from Annapolis He's referring to DJF secretary Vincent Chiraldi, who says a person should not be exposed to the prison system before the age of 25. And he had brought up about, well, your honor, they're finding now that when uh, that you're not, you know, that your brain is not fully developed until you're 25 years old. Although Brittany's murder happened before the state's current juvenile crime laws took effect, these parents say they're opening the door for crimes like this to happen more often. They say they want to close the book on the current juvenile crime laws. We have to find a way, all of us, to work together to reform these laws. Because if we don't, what we're seeing now, it's, it's out of control. Before more parents end up grieving. It's just sad that I'll never see her again until I die.